So my kids are outside screaming their faces off right now, having the best of time with a new group of uh, girls that we met in the neighborhood. So there are now like eight crazy girls just hanging out out there. So you're probably going to hear them through this video. And I apologize in advance, but you know, before I tell you what we're making today that has nothing whatsoever to do with uh, screaming children, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are here for another round of 365 days of soap. And today we are making a new custom bar for one of my wholesale accounts. Now, this particular wholesaler had contacted me and asked me my opinion on uh, sensitive skin soaps. So good soaps for dermatitis, eczema, that sort of thing. And here's the thing, in the soaping world, it's very important that you, me, we all, understand that soap is a rinse off product, right? So this is not something that has contact with your skin for longer than like 30 seconds at a time, right? So any of the benefits that the oils and the butters and everything that you put into the soap could have, could impart to your skin, it's a very, very slight imparting of said thing. Does that make sense as slight imparting? I, we're gonna roll with that because otherwise I'm just gonna sit here and just go, hmm for like way too long. So yeah, it's a very, it's not there for very long, right? Now leave on products are a different story. So, you know, you have like a lotion or a balm or a face oil or something like that. You're actually getting the benefits of the oils and the botanicals and the extracts and the things that you put into the product for a longer period of time, having time to actually soak into your skin. But with a soap, again, while there are benefits, it is a very small amount of time that they actually make contact with your skin. So for that reason, soap is soap. Soap is meant to cleanse. Soap is not meant to irritate, right? So those are the things that I explained to her as well as, you know, gave her some options for what she could put into her line to help out people with sensitive skin. And the biggest thing is going to be, you don't want fragrance. You don't want, you know, any sort of uh, pore clogging oils or butters, anything that's gonna be too heavy. Obviously you don't want any allergen stuff. So stay away from the nut oils, but I do that anyway. And you probably want a milk soap of some sort. So, so we decided we were going to make a scent free batch that contains aloe vera, oat milk, and also clodial oatmeal in it. And I'm going to show you how to make that as well as the oils that I selected for this and give you a cool recipe for it if you want to try it yourself. So let's go. Okay, so first up is the lye prep. And so that's my oat milk that's in there right now. And it's cool. It's uh, sitting at about a hundred degrees. So we actually warmed up this milk to do the thing because for this I actually want the scorching to occur and I know in a lot of milk things or beer things or thing things people are always like hey you should freeze this do you freeze it Fr freeze it do you freeze it can I no freeze it and uh, I don't do that most of the time I mean I do with beers but never with milks uh, because I actually like the scorching of the milk and it adds some cool color and this is especially important for a sensitive skin bar because I put zero colors in it to make it nice and, you know, nothing is in it, which is cool. So with the first edition of the lye, I do put the lye in in stages, it got to 147 degrees, right? And that's great. And uh, then we have the second edition of the lye here. So. I want you to watch what, you know, happens and how hot it gets. 
and you know the thing and so I, I left this in normally I don't show you the lie prep or whatever because lies lie or whatever but it's nice to have an actual visual on what happens when you use a hot uh, milk whoa yeah it so it, it it came up and then look it went down it's all good I didn't die although don't do what I'm doing with my like I don't have gloves on or anything like that's stupid what the hell is wrong with me put your gloves on I'm talking to myself but also I'm talking to you put your gloves on and what is that 218 degrees it's hot that's a hot 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 solution and so that's gonna have to take quite a bit of time to cool down before we can use it so when I do it this way I am either going to do a heat transfer method for the soap or I am going to go make like 12 other soaps while I am waiting for this to cool down because it's gonna take a while for this to cool down to workability the workability for something like this though really doesn't have to be a hundred below 120 degrees so because it's a very simple soap there's not a lot going on now what's going on here is I have the kaolin clay that's been dispersed in water and then I also have that stuff in the silver bowl there those are uh, shredded soaps from a beer soap that I made in advance and it doesn't have anything in it except beer and a very gentle oil blend and those have also been coated in boatloads of colonial oatmeal and so that's you know great now this has cooled down to an acceptable temperature to do the mixy mix and all the things and so we're gonna do the mixy mix and all the things right now and then and then we're going to put the kaolin clay in as well as the uh, soap shreds there now I include the soap shreds for a few reasons one the extra addition of beer is really great for uh, sensitive skin problems because beer actually helps kind of balance the skin sebum and kill off any sort of you know weird bacteria and you know again you're balancing the acid mantle so that's helpful and two um, it actually acts as a really good way to kind of disperse the colloidal oatmeal in the batch in such a way that it contributes to the lather and I do actually need things to contribute to the lather for this guy and the reason for that is the oil blend that I put in it right so in this is babassu and babassu is my only solid oil right babassu it's very it's a very very good oil it's a dry oil that doesn't clog pores and it soothes distressed skin and it's a nice substitution for palm and that is the only solid oil that I have in this in this batch now the rest of the oils that go into this are karanja which really high levels of omega-9 right so it's great for wound healing eczema those sorts of things and hemp now hemp is also good for eczema and dry skin and all that jazz you know in its solid form and then as well and then olive oil so in total this is a 60 40 split of liquid to solid now I'm sure you guys are like familiar with like castor or uh, castile soaps right dr. Bronner's mostly olive oil that thing yeah um, so I don't make Castile because I don't make liquid soaps, but I make Bastille. And I showed you a version of my Bastille soap for the kids line a few months ago. And this is not exactly a Bastille because again, we have a, a lot of olive oil in here, but I would say that in total, the olive oil is only about 50% of the batch. And I technically do not count a soap as a Bastille soap, so a solid version of a Castile, unless you have at least 70% olive oil in it. But the olive oil is going to be really good to really um, gently cleanse the skin, reduce inflammation, it helps smoothing. It's it's a lovely oil to put in soap. But again, because I need, because I have a lot of liquid oils and lots of liquid oils that aren't super duper bubblers, I need all the help that I can get with this bubbling. So I put the colloidal oatmeal in with the beer soap. The beer soap will aid in the bubbling, so the colloidal oatmeal, especially when it's released the way that it will be, and then the kaolin clay is good for that as well. So those are all going to help the babasu really do its you know bubbly thing, which is good because I 
want a sensitive skin soap to perform just as well as all of the rest of my soaps, you know, be because they should. Like, you have sensitive skin, that's not your fault. Why should you have a weird, slimy lather? And that's not to say that, you know, olive oil soaps aren't great, because they are, they're, they're, they're great, but I don't like the lather of them, right? I like, I like a nice bubble, and I don't get super big bubble with olive oil, and I do find the lather to be a little bit slimy. So that, I'm not a fan of. But with the, you know, inclusion of the beer soaps that are in here, as well as the um, Claudia Oatmeal and Kaylin Clay, I get a really big, beautiful bubble from this, while still getting all the benefits from the uh, the soap itself and all of the the reasons that we're putting this in for uh, all these things and for a sensitive oil or a sensitive skin recipe, really. And a uh, final step with this is going to be to put the oats on top. And so this thing is packed with oats. I mean, I'm just driving the point home in 19 different ways, right? Lots and lots of oats. And all of my oats are um, gluten-free, the oats that I, that I get. And I actually, and that's true of the oat milk as well. So yay. And this guy is ready to actually get firmed up overnight. We will not be sea popping it and we'll cut it tomorrow. And now we are onto the cut. And is, aren't those just beautiful soaps? The, the color is just so creamy and delightful and awesome. And that's, you know, the Vasu, it's a very, very white oil. So that definitely cuts down on some of the green and orange that you get from the Karanja and the hemp and the olive to that but the uh also one of the reasons why it's you know white er is the addition of the kale and clay which is good so ultimately this was exactly what i wanted as far as the color went and the scorching of the lye really did help that to lend to a sort of creamier color instead of you know whatever but that is just such a beautiful bar of soap and the, the cool texture inside from the you know beer soap shreds that were mixed with the colonial oatmeal it's just great it's such a cool bar of soap so it becomes an oat bar through and through and again this is unscented so there's you know nothing in here for I mean you really have to be be careful with you know I mean you always should be careful with like allergies and potentials whatever and I have my theories as to whether or not you know, the proteins behind the oils that you put in your soaps actually survive the spontification process, but that's not, that's not for this video. And also it's not for, you know, me to decide. So if my client says that they have an allergic reaction to, you know, coconut, I don't give them a bar. I give them a bar without coconut because I'm not a doctor and I'm not their, you know, allergist. So we do the things. And uh, yeah, these bars are, I don't know. We can't say hypoallergenic, right? Because that's claiming a, a product is whatever. But they're pretty extraordinary. This is a great recipe for sensitive skin, and you will love it. I promise. That's day 146, the oat milk soaps. And that is it for that bar. And isn't it just beautiful? It is such a delightful bar. And all of the coloring was completely, you know, natural because it was the scorching of the oat milk that essentially created the color of the bar ultimately. And the extra addition of putting in, you know, the beer soap as embeds along with Claudia oatmeal just makes for such a big, beautiful, gently detoxifying lather that really helps your skin retain its own moisture. And again, there's no scent in this. It smells like soap and has a slight hint of like the oats and that coming through. So it's an absolutely delightful bar. The lather on this one is really just off the charts though. I really do love this one. And I am so happy to deliver this to my client because I know that her uh, well, they're not Sudzers if they're her clients, but I know that her clients will, will love them as well. And if you are interested in these bars, you can't get them from me. I do not have them on my website. You cannot find them at soapandclay.com, but you can find them at a drop in the ocean shop.com. And I will leave a link for her as well. You should pick them up because they are something special. And I'm very proud of these guys. I mean, I'm proud of all of my soaps, obviously, but this one's cool too. So anyway, that really does it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I super appreciate it. I am going to be done 
for the day and sign off and do the things, you should subscribe before you bounce to another video. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.